Today we're going to look at how to build some easy mob farms in Corekeeper. Setting these up will provide you with a consistent source of resources for making potions, some of the best foods, items to sell to the NPCs, as well as rare accessories. Before we begin, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you never miss any future Corekeeper videos. Let's get started. Let's take a look at what we're going to need in order to build these mob farms. So today I'm going to show you how to build a mob farm for slime, for larva, and for poison slime. In order to make the one for slimes, you're going to need some ground slime, you're going to need chrysalis for the larva farm, and you're going to need ground poison slime for the poison, poison slimes, and we're going to need some spike traps. So let's first take a look at where to get the different resources in order to spawn in the mobs. To get the ground slime, you're mainly going to find that inside of the dirt biome. So that's the area right around the core here. This is all the dirt biome, the brown. You can also find it on the path over here where Gorm the Devourer wanders. And it can also be found on some other spots. But the main area you're going to find is right by the core. You should see a decent amount of slime. So, for example, this is where the slime boss was on my on this world. And there's a bunch of slime up here. I've cleared out most of the slimes over here. But you can just dig that up using any shovel, even a wooden shovel. In order to get the chrysalis, what you're going to be looking for is the clay biome. And now, do be mindful that the maps are procedurally generated, so your clay biome might not be in the same spot. However, it's going to look the same on the map color-wise, so this is going to be the biome we're looking for. This is where the larvae spawn. So the lighter color here is where you're going to find most of the larvae. There's going to be chrysalis there, but you can also find chrysalis in this darker orange color here. So you'll dig that up using the shovel as well, and it requires just a wooden shovel. And then to find the poison slime, we're going to go up here all the way up to the newer biome that was added in the early access. That's going to be the poison slime. The ground poison slime, that's this purple stuff up here. So that's found in this nature biome up here, which is beyond the stone biome. And you're just going to dig that up again with a wooden shovel or whatever shovel you have and bring that back to your base. Now, besides that, you're going to need the spikes. You can use the, let's see if I actually have some in here. You can actually use the hive spike trap that you find down in the, where the larva are. However, it only does, what, 33 to 39 damage. The spike trap does 51 to 61, so it's going to come a little bit faster. It's also super cheap to craft, so you're just going to need the tin workbench. And then in the tin workbench, you can craft the spike traps. They only cost one tin bar. If you're not sure where to find tin, I do have a video for that. I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. But these are super cheap to craft. I, I, I mean, I made a bunch of them. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go take a look at how to set up the mob farms. So this is the basic setup I use to build these mob farms. You can make it any size you want. I would say this is a decent size. It's going to get you a decent amount of resources. I haven't tested bigger than this, but I have tested smaller. The smaller ones didn't seem to do as well. I will tell you that this size does pretty well. I'm going to show you how much resources I've gotten in the three mob farms. In about a couple of hours, I haven't gathered anything up. So basically all I did, and you don't have to do this, but I trenched around it with water just to keep everything away. The mobs do not attack the walls from what I've seen. If you're on the other side of a wall, they might attack you. I did use, I usually have gates up here or fence it, the fence gates, but for some reason, I think there's a bug right now where the fence gates despawn every time you load into a game. So until that's fixed, I usually just put a wall there, which you can easily break to get in here and get the resources. So basically what I do is I will place the different, whatever, whatever I'm using here, whatever I want to spawn in. So if I want slimes to spawn in here, I'm going to fill in this dirt area with the ground slime that I just dug up. And then I'm going to put some in the middle as well. And then I'm going to put these spike traps here. And this will get you tons of the resource. So let's take a look at the ones that I already have existing right now. So first up, we're going to start with the slime, the slime farm. And like I said, this is a couple hours worth. And right now I have two slime in my inventory. So let's just trash this. Let's trash everything in my inventory that may cause us to see how little, how much we got. So let's just grab everything that's in here. So as you can see, the slimes drop, of course, slime. They also drop seeds. This is pretty much what you're going to get from here. And this is after a couple of hours. So I got 22 slime. We got eight heartberry seeds and we got five bomb pepper seeds. Pretty decent for that little bit of time. Let's take a look at what we got from the larva farm over here. So the larva farm, you'll notice these little pods here. The larva might spawn when I go in here. So we're going to make sure we have our weapon out in just a second. And there's the larva are going to drop slime. They're going to drop fiber. They can also drop seeds. They're going to drop larva meat, which is what you're most interested in. And then, of course, they can also drop resources that can be sold. So these skulls can be sold to the NPCs for ancient coins. So let's break this real quick. We're going to grab in here. And we had 22 slime before. So the, I leave these here. I'm going to leave these here because I want them to spawn in more mobs. I have seen the regular larva spawn in and the big larva. I have not seen any of the red larva. I'm not sure if they can spawn here or not. So we had 22 slimes. So we got seven slimes, three larva meat, four fiber, and three caveling skulls. And then we're just going to put this wall back here so they can't get out. And then last but not least, it's going to be the poison slime. Now, I don't have my... Po Do I have the poison ring on? I'm not sure if this stuff actually poisons you. I guess we'll find out. Yes, it does, in fact, poison you. So you want to make sure you have on a poison... Something for poison guard if you're going in here. We're just going to grab all the poison slime from here and whatever else we can grab. 
Poison Slime, like I said, was the newest thing that was added in the of, the, of these resources. So we got 18 Poison Slime. We actually got the Remedazy Necklace, which makes you immune to poison. So perfect, that dropped. I can actually equip that. I already have one of those, but I can equip that, which will prevent me from taking poison damage in here. And we got the Purple Slime Figurine, which you can actually either sell or display. So let's up, go up here real quick and take a look at what you can actually use these resources for and why the, I recommend doing this. Aside from the fact that it's easy resources, I think you can actually sell them. Let's see what we can if we can sell these. They could be a source of money too. So the slime sell for one ancient coin each, not that great. The slime figurine we can sell as well. Seeds actually have decent value. So if you have a ton of seeds, you're not worried about it, you could sell those. We're definitely gonna sell the cabling skulls. Uh, I already have one of these so I can sell that. And the rest of the stuff we're gonna keep. So we got 80 coins out of that, not too bad going full AFK here. Now let's take a look at what you can use these resources for. So the slimes are gonna be predominantly used for making potions. So the regular slimes are used for the regular potion table. I think it's I think it's called the alchemy table. So you got the healing potion, the enrage potion, the stone skin potion. It's also used for making the crew bombs and the bombs. And then the poison slimes used for the distillery table. This is the higher level crafting table for potions. You can get the greater healing potion. You can get yourself a keen potion, or the gardens po guardians potion, the poison aid potion, the large bomb, and then okay, what is this? An adorable slime blob. Oh wait, you can actually craft. But you can craft. I didn't know you could craft these. I've just seen this. You can actually craft yourself using 10 ground slime. You can craft a blob of slime. Interesting. I didn't know that. That's the first time I've seen that. So that's what those are used for. I don't think they're using any of the cooking recipes, but I think slime is used also for down here. Let's go down here and take a look real quick. So you're going to need slime in order to make the lanterns. So there's a orb lantern as well as a regular lantern somewhere. This small lantern here. So that's what they're going to be used for. The larva meat is going to be predominantly used for foods. So if you look over here at one of the cooking stations, we'll see what we have unlocked for recipes. Larva meat by itself gives you, now I have a higher cooking skill, so it's probably bought a little bit, but for me, 11 food, 2.8 health. It's about the same as the, a lot of the other resources. Like it's only a little bit better than mushrooms, actually the same as heart berries. However, when you combine this with other foods, what you're gonna see is you actually get way more food and the buffs overall are good. So in terms of for cooking recipes, larva meat's gonna be one of your better recipes. So if you are looking to get mob farm set up, that's gonna be how I recommend doing it. Like I said, you can actually build them larger or smaller. It's up to you. This is a decent size for me. You don't have to put water around them unless you want to. And as you can see right here, see it in action. So these mobs are gonna spawn in. What they're gonna do is they're gonna walk across the spikes eventually. You don't even have to aggro them. They will just naturally walk across there. From what I've seen, the resources in here do not despawn. As of right now, they do not despawn. So you can just come grab them whenever you want. Just leave it run for a couple hours while you're out exploring. Come back to wherever your mob farm set up and you will have easy resources. And as you can see, these guys are a little bit beefy here. So eventually this larva, the big larva is gonna die here. Hopefully drop us some larva meat, maybe something cool in addition to that. So anyway, there we go. There's our larva meat and our slime. Like I said, just leave these set up for a couple hours and come back and you'll have tons of resources or you can check them whenever you wanna check them, it's up to you. But anyway, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more Core Keeper videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.